Um, so, uh, I'm going to do a talk on deploying on Stack with Chef. Um, there's my pertinent. Uh, I'm the Goat Father, or the nickname is the Goat Father. Uh, if you don't know what that means, come by the Config Management Camp at Gint, and you can find out. Uh, otherwise, just start to Google that, and you'll find it. Uh, I am not a chef, but I work for chef. Um, I noticed that when we make these slides nowadays and our company name is now chef instead of ops code, it gets very confusing when you just click chef and people think that you're going to put down. Uh, so some background on me. Uh, I did Linux engineering for a long time and I guess still do uh, to an extent. Uh, worked in operations environments for a company called Orbit. They run uh, a site called eBookers here in Europe but also travel sites in the US as well. I've uh, done performance and capacity planning, uh, cloud arch architects, done a lot with automation, and like I said, I currently work with Chef. Uh, so hopefully everyone in the room knows what CloudStack is, uh, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, CloudStack is an open source cloud management layer. It was started by a company called cloud.com. They open source about 95% of their code under GPL v3. Um, kind of the common misconception is that uh, CloudStack was never uh, open source. Uh, CloudStack was actually pretty much open source from the beginning uh, when cloud.com released it. So in May 2010, they released it. Shortly thereafter, they got bought by Citrix. Uh, and Citrix is actually, as some of you guys might know, trying to develop more of an open model in the things that they do with things like Zen and CloudStack. Um, Cloud.com, like I said, was bought, and then Citrix donated the CloudStack code to the Apache Software Foundation uh, in April of 2012. And then shortly thereafter, CloudStack 4.0 came out, and that was the first release that was actually incubated from the Apache Software Foundation. Uh, it is now under the Apache license, no longer under the GPL license. Um, so, this talk may be a little haphazard, uh, and the reason why it's a little haphazard was I wanted a month to prepare for this, and I got through like three days. Um, and well, because, you know, life happens, right? So I'm happy to jump in, I'm not complaining, I just wanted to lay the groundwork of why it's a little haphazard. Uh, so the basics, so what are the basic components that we need to uh, essentially install CloudStack? Uh, so this doesn't matter if you're using Puppet, if you're using CF Engine, if you're using whatever, if you're doing it manually. Uh, you need to install the database, <coughs> you need to set up NFS optionally, uh, you need to install CloudStack, and then step four and all of these things, right, the last step is you prop it. So uh, I'll, I'll preface this with uh, do as I say, not as I do. Uh, and you'll see what that means as we kind of progress throughout this. Uh, so let's do a quick demo. And I totally forgot that I was supposed to have this running ahead of time. Because this takes like five minutes to run. Uh, so I can very easily just do a vagrant uh, stack up. And it's going to kick off the box. And it's going to go through the process of, of actually installing CloudStack. And, um, or, uh, I have to run the right command. I know everybody in the room was giggling when I typed that. It's like, what is this guy doing? So this is going to come up. And if you're not extremely familiar with Chef, I'll kind of explain what's going on as this kind of scrolls in the background. Um, but before I do that, essentially what I have set up is I have uh, a couple recipes. Uh, so in this case, this recipe only works for uh, a Red Hat based operating system. Uh, it hasn't been extended for um, Debian based operating systems or other operating systems. Uh, and essentially, we're just going to take the template uh, resource and add in the yum repos that we need. Uh, for CloudStack. So the nice thing about CloudStack is they provide binaries for everything. So for whatever particular platform you need, you can either have get install or yum install. Uh, so I'll set up my template and then I'm going to install the CloudStack manager uh, piece. And then we're going to go and kind of do all of kind of the ancillary components, right? You could stop right here and then you could kind of do the rest of the configuration management yourself if you wanted to. But what you really want to do is you want to go in and you want to create pass for like NFS. Um, of course, you always want to shell out the batch in your configuration management. You know. 
Uh, you want to initialize the database and so forth, right? Uh, this is actually a recipe that was contributed by uh, a guy named Pierre Dion, I think his name is. Uh, he's from Montreal, and uh, he works for a company called CloudOps, uh, and they deploy CloudStack as a living for people who want to use CloudStack. Uh, so this one's available on our community site, and it works fairly well, obviously. <laughs> oh, yeah, I had this problem earlier. So we'll try it one more time. And this is always the danger in doing a live demo, is that it just doesn't work. And we've rebooted the network again. No, here we go. I was doing this earlier, and the network came out from underneath me, and then all the APs went away. Um, And because I'm doing things like going out to Yum, then of course, you know, you need to have an internet connection if you don't have. Um, there we go. So we got further that time. Uh, so we'll just let this run and bake in the background. And we'll come back to it here in a second. Um, so this kind of base recipe that uh, Pierre had, or this base cookbook, works fairly well. But if you want to take it and extend it a little bit further, then you can make it better in the following ways. Uh, so you can set up the base infrastructure. So CloudStack has this concept of zones and pods and networking that you need to set up so that you can actually make it something useful. So each, basically, uh, tenant would have their own network. Uh, so you can segregate virtual machines on the CloudStack cloud. Uh, so you want to set up base infrastructure, and then you want to set up hosts as well. In this case, this doesn't actually set up any hosts that have virtualization running on them, like Zen or KVM hosts. Um, so in this case, we want to make it better, and then I would demo that again if I was smart enough to get the demo running in the first place. Uh, so it's booting now, and so to basically make it a little bit better, there's this plugin called, uh, or this command line utility called uh, Podma. And what this allows you to do is essentially um, interact with CloudStack's API via the command line, right? So typically what ends up happening in your development lifecycle of configuration management is you get it working with the command line utilities and you wrap configuration management around it. And then you go and make it better and you do it the right way by interacting with the API directly. Uh, so what I did here is essentially in this case, we're going to create a, another template, and this template's going to pull a lot of data. And so uh, this is one of the things that I love about Chef is all of the data that you have available to, um, to yourself in your recipes and, and, and so forth. And so I'm going to create a template, which is actually just a script. And Sean, if you were in Sean's talk earlier, would probably be uh, trolling me right now. And he probably is, I just don't know it. And then I'm going to actually execute this script that I run. And these variables will feed into this template. So this is kind of a core concept of Chef. If you're not familiar with Chef, all of these variables are then can be used inside of this template when this template is parsed by the uh, Chef grouping parser. And so what I'm going to get here is a configuration file, and I'll actually show you with all of my data. So there's all of my commands that come in, or all of my, my parameters that come in. And then I can actually walk through the process of actually creating the actual zones. Um, so all that data comes from is from what's called our environments. So we don't necessarily need more than one cloud stack environment, or you don't want it once more than one cloud stack server running maybe in uh, one environment. So you can actually feed in data to that script that I have to actually configure all of the IP address information and things like that. So all of this data gets fed into that script that we just saw, and then that actually executes the Cloud Monkey pieces. If I flip back, this is actually working. And so in this case, we're actually installing the Cloud Stack uh, components at, that, at this point. Any questions at this point? Yes? Uh -huh. 
So, uh, how do you show that the <coughs> Yeah. So, um, what what um, what Chef has is something called encrypted data bags, and in this case, this recipe doesn't use encrypted data bags. But what uh, data bags essentially are are <laughs> uh, basically data objects that you can store structured data, right? And in this case, it's JSON structured data objects. And so essentially you can create these data structures. And if you, so go home or go out in the hallway or you can do it now while I'm talking to you. Um, so Google uh, Ops Code Chef encrypted data bags. And the example we actually give is how to store a MySQL password in an encrypted data bag. And essentially what ends up happening is then your cookbook or your recipe can actually query that data and use it. Uh, it'll have the pre-shared secret key to encrypt that data or decrypt that data bag, uh, but that's the way that you solve like, the passwords. What's actually happening in this recipe, which is really bad, and so uh, I'll kind of cover why this recipe was written uh, in a little bit. But what they're actually doing is uh, it's just putting it in an attribute, and so anybody can actually go and query and see that data, and that's not really what you want with your root password for databases, right? Right? <laughs> so in this case, um, there's actually lots of recipes in this cookbook that does the actual installation process. So in this case, this is initializing the database. Yeah, and if I can pull it up, you'll see all of the steps that it's doing. So in this case, you see it's querying the server with password, uh, not encrypting it. And then it actually runs the initialization routines. So in this case, um, this is kind of a problem with some, I guess, software packages. Uh, I thought I was getting hooked off already. I'm like, wait, I have time. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very quick <laughs> yes. Um, the problem with some of these software things that you might download is that they have this kind of script already to initialize the databases. So if you were in the talk earlier when we did the class or the configuration management 101, um, this isn't something that's you know item potent, right? So in this case, what he's doing um, is he's using some some pieces of Chef to actually go in and query and say, did we already initialize the database? Because if we already initialized the database, and if so, if that's one, then I don't need to do this again, right? And so he's trying to make it. Uh, <laughs> you like that? Don't you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so he's initializing the database only if he needs to initialize the database. So this recipe can run. Multiple times. So if we go and check on this, uh, we had a problem because the internet's having fun. Uh, and so let's go and talk about why this sucks. <laughs> um, so back in November, I think it was, uh, I had a talk with a guy on my team called Matt Ray. Uh, Matt Ray has been working almost exclusively, he works for Chef, but he's been working almost exclusively with what we call our uh, cloud integration team, which the cloud integration team is actually just Matt. So. <laughs> he's been running this, and he's been working almost exclusively with OpenStack. And what's really kind of awesome, I'm not going to get into a cloud stack versus OpenStack debate, um, we can later, but what's really awesome and what Matt has done has developed really good content along with the OpenStack community to uh, deploy <coughs> OpenStack in kind of a well-known way that's consistent and things like that. It's been used so good, or it, it's, it's been curated so well that it's actually used to run a lot of the continuous integration environments that OpenStack uses. So when somebody merges a change in, that's picked up, and uh, essentially a shop process gets kicked off to build an OpenStack environment uh, from with those changes and things like that. So what's happening with CloudStack is we have fun things like this. So search for CloudStack cookbook. And you're like, great. I have lots of choices. Uh, which one should I use? 
Uh, well, I could use this one, which is from a provider in the Netherlands who uh, you know does great works. And it looks like, oh, well, they even like they contributed a cookbook. Good for you guys. Uh, not being facetious, really good for you guys. And then they have uh, a nice little blog post about how they're using Vagrant and CloudStack and Chef cookbooks. Uh, and then, oh, but this one looks good because it's on the Opscode site. So this must be the official supported thing, right? Uh, and look, there it is. It's been downloaded seven times. The other thing is like, uh, it's nice and it's fresh, right? So you want to make sure that it's recent and somebody's updated it. Uh, it works maybe on the distro that I need. Well, let's dig down a little bit more. And then here's the CloudStack Cookbook 1. Uh, and this was contributed by Hugo. Is Hugo in the room? Hugo already knows to, how to do this, so he didn't show up. Um, but you know, it's four months old, so it's not too terribly old. It might be fresh. And then I have this other one, which was contribu contributed by Citrix. Oh, wait, but Citrix, CloudStack, they're related. There should be a good love fest here. Uh, that one's 11 months old. So it's good. I've got a lot of choice, right? <laughs> um, but you know, it's kind of like the yak walking into the bathroom and he realizes, well, I need to shave. And so you start to download the cookbooks and the next thing you know, none of these are good because they've been written for somebody's specific environment, right? So the cookbook that I was showing earlier is actually developed for a very good use case uh, of, uh, they, so the CloudOps teams develops, uh, develops pieces for CloudStack as well and contributes that in. Well, their developers need environments to actually test their code on. And so what's good about that cookbook is that the developer can actually do a vagrant up and he gets his own little environment on his machine and he can test his cloud stack code, right? But it's not developed for production. The Schubert Phyllis guy stuff, well, that's developed for their environment and it's great and you guys have contributed something to the community, but I don't know what path I need to go down, right? Of like, which, which one should I choose? And so what I'm, like, everybody who's worked with open source for a long time knows what I'm talking about. Right, uh, it's a re you know, it's it's the reason why I'm not in the desktop room right now, right? Because after years of frustration, I said fuck it and I went and bought a Mac, right? And I'll run open source on the servers, but you know, I just want something that works, right? And I don't want to have to shave the app all the time. And then this continues, right? It was like, uh, so there's a command line utility called Nightpod Stack, uh, and it's really cool. Uh, you know, there's plugins for our tool called Knife. And what Knife allows you to do, if you're not familiar with it, is one, you can interact with the Chef server and you can change things, uh, change settings and bits and pieces, upload your cookbooks, all that fun stuff. But then there's plugins. And so Knife is essentially provides a framework and you can uh, provision instances in EC2 or OpenStack, or you can manage your CloudStack cloud. And then we get into the exact same thing again. It's like. All right, well, this one is CloudStack extra, Extras and looks really all official and everything. But then there's this other one, and, you know, and which one should I use? Uh, and so once again, um, so what I'm like, kind of the whole premise of this talk is, is one, I hope you got something useful out of it. Uh, there is a path to actually deploy CloudStack with Chef. Uh, the problem is, is it's not well curated by the community yet, right? And so I had this conversation with Matt, and essentially what we want to try and do is we want to develop better content for the community to have a well set path so you're not having these questions of, uh, you know, where do I put my password, right? Have something that's really well known and it can be repeatable. It can be for lab environments, for developers, it can be for production environments as well, right? And so really what I'm kind of here to say is, uh, you know, talk to me afterwards, reach out to me on Twitter, and let's get together as a community and kind of really curate this content for CloudStack. Because CloudStack is a great cloud system. Uh, it provides um, uh, a lot of things that, uh, an ease of use path that other cloud provider or cloud management systems don't have. Uh, it's well proven in many production, production deployments. 
Uh, and we can make it a lot better. You know, and reason the reason why I kind of like came up with this as the premise for my talk and to prove I'm just not kind of bullshitting you guys, uh, just on my experience, is I was talking to somebody at a big bank and uh, they they use Chef and he, they also are wanting to use CloudStack. And he's like, hey, I was gonna install CloudStack with Chef and I found this cookbook and I found this cookbook and I don't know which one to use. And I told him we'll use these two. And he's like, well, what about this CloudStack knife fog stuff and all this other stuff, right? So this is like real pain that our users have. And what we've kind of come up with this theme with for Chef is this, right? So our kind of, and you can see it on my shirt, which uh, this is Morse code, and I think it's the wrong Morse code. We have two t-shirts. It's the wrong Morse code and then the right Morse code on them. But it's make it fucking delightful because this is not a delightful process, right? And as you develop any of your open source stuff and contribute it back into the community and put it up on GitHub, make sure that you're making it fucking delightful for someone who's gonna go and download it later. Because the number one kind of complaint about GitHub is there's just so much shit up there these days, right? And you can't go and grab something without making sure that it's gonna work, right? So we're sharing, but we're not making it a delightful sharing experience. So that's my talk. What questions do you guys have? And if there are some questions about actually deploying Podstack with Chef and other experiences and how people get things to work, uh, come and talk to me as well, because we can have those conversations as well, a little bit more in depth. Nothing? All right. Thank you very much.